Yeah, we've got that on. That'll be the others that I haven't turned up tonight. I can put that on the VLE. Okay. So it analyzed the effectiveness of the, of the assessment methods in relation to meeting the individual needs of learners. So what assessment methods do you use and why? Talk about different methods and then choose one to analyze. Right? Six three is use types and methods of assessment, including peer and self-assessment. Uh, two, involve learners in assessment, meet the individual needs of learners, enable learners to produce assessment evidence that is valid, reliable, sufficient, authentic, current, and meets the internal and external assessment requirements. So this is where this is where you can talk about the the records of you actually giving any formative feedback. Um, and how you how you show the progress of your learner right up to when they take the exam and beyond. Obviously, you'll you'll probably have some discussion if they've taken an exam and they've passed it. Then obviously you you will probably have some discussion with that learner afterwards, won't you? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, use question and feedback to continue uh, to contribute to the assessment process. So. Comprehensively, using your appendices, the, the, any documentation you've got, which you can then use to cross-reference them into other units of this as well, because this will get mentioned again, different types of methods of assessment, including peer and self-assessment. Now, there is a, a piece on there on, on peer and self-assessment in there for you to have a read out, uh, just to clue you up if you've got an issue with regard to what's expected there. Record outcomes of assessments to meet internal and external requirements. So that's your records. Communicate assessment information with other professionals with an interest in the learner. This is dealing with your external body that does the examination, yeah? Okay. Mm. Now this one is one we discussed, I remember talking about this before, we've got analyzed ways in which minimum core elements can be demonstrated in planning, delivering, and assessing inclusive teaching and learning. It's use of diagnostic tests, English, maths, IT, an explanation of where they apply and fit into your course. They may not all be in your course, but we'll say why, yeah? Okay. I've given, I've given everybody a get out there to explain why uh, certain aspects don't are not covered, then, um, then fine. But usually when you go into the process of doing that, you find that probably they are to some extent. So, yeah. And then it's apply those in during your delivery. Here you need to apply the evidence of tasks at 7.1 to show how they help in planning and deleting. That's another spelling mistake. I B E R. Doesn't matter how many times you go over some of these, you'll find spelling mistakes afterwards. 8.1, or LO8 itself, is a review of the effectiveness of your own practice. And this is a reflective re review. So I put down there a reflective review of your own practice. Check your additional, mat any material needed. Oh, forget that bit, I've changed that now. If you explain, um, I'll do a, a reflective review of your own practice and how you operate. Uh, what you will actually come up with is ideas for improvement in your own practice in planning, delivery, and assessing inclusive teaching and learning. So again, ideas from your reflection of learning outcome seven. Uh, in you, you see, unit three, you've not got to yet, but it, it does cover this similar area. So if you, if you do this quite comprehensively, you'll probably be able to cross-reference the work you've done here directly into that unit to save you covering it all again. Well, I have put um, reminders in this to, to remind you that it does that. And when you get to unit three, I've put on this will cross-reference from unit one, depending on what you wrote. You just need to read through what you wrote to unit one and make sure it covers what it asks for in unit three. That's all, really. Anyway, all these suggestions to help you use naturally occurring evidence that you produce in your day-to-day -day work. Some of you may not have covered all the practices in your job. For instance, initial assessment may be done by someone else. Uh, in this case, you can get copies of those 
for two learners that are in your class. The same applies to other processes that you have not personally done, but you must give full details of how the process works. So that's really looking at that. Now, I'm not sure whether I sent you a copy of this. Uh, did I did I send something with your email when I when I sent you feedback? Was there an, uh, another attachment? No, all that was attached was um, the, the feedback. Yeah. What I did. Right. Well, what I'll do is I will put this back to the right. What I've done is I've actually um, looked at other options with regard to this, and basically um, I've looked at this particular area and I picked out this one. Um, it really tells you all about the unit aim on here. Um, and it, in a bit more detail of what I've just talked about now, it covers you know, a range of things that you need to be aware of. The other part of it, as we move on, I've, I've highlighted in red here, this is unit amplification. Um, and this bit here, uh, can you see which I'm marking there? Yeah. This bit there, it's like, <clears throat> how shall I say, it's like a brainstorming exercise that you do on your own. Um, it's really a bunch of things. You don't have to put them all in. It's some sort of indicative content, yeah? Obviously, you, if you put them all in, you'd, be, you'd end up with about 10 million words. Um, but it, it's looking at ideas for, for what you need to put in in that particular, in that particular area, yeah? Yeah. So it talks about things like uh, mastery learning, uh, supported learning, how that actually works out um, using teaching as scaffolding and that nature. Um, evaluate the effectiveness and use creative innovation approaches. So that's self directed study, extension activities, project based, practical applications, practicing skills blended learning, flexible online learning, a whole host of things in there that um, some of which may not apply to you, but it gives you the ideas for the ones that do. Uh, and then you can actually do a bit of research on those and, and use that as a basis for your, um, um, your script. Oops. Yeah, hello two individual goals, use SWOT analysis, things like RPL, what they've done before, which you probably do anyway, and it may be in, in the uh, some of the documentation you've already got. Um, learning preferences, VARC, uh, that sort of thing. Learning needs, inclusive diversity in a range of styles, approaches, definite goals, building understanding, delivery models, sequence, linked assessment, skills development, a whole thing, raft of things in there, just to give you some ideas, yeah? Okay. And it goes down through the actual unit, individual ACs, bit by bit. Um, it, it covers things like, um, that you may need to look up spiral process of product-based mastery of practical skills. Now that may be an area that, that um, you're involved in. If you, it, it, maybe not what it says on here, but when you actually read what's inside that, then you'd probably say, oh yeah, that's what we do, yeah. Okay. Yeah, so this is purely an aid memoir, really, to, to, to give you some, right, well, what shall I write about that? Have, let's have a look on there. Let's have what sort of indicative content it's, it's talking about, and then you can work from there. Now, there's, there's quite a bit of stuff on the BLE to cover different aspects of this. Um, and there are quite a few handouts as well that I've put on, usually Word documents those, uh, where I've actually adapted something I've got from somewhere else, or it's a piece that I've put together myself over the last few years and put those in as well. And it, it just covers specific um, instances of, of specific pieces like um, behavior, um, equal, equal ops, all that sort of thing I've put into the as short, well, two or three pages, some of them are, some of them only a page, handouts for you to have a read through to just sort of give you some ideas. Oops. I don't think I need to 
um, burden you too much with this. But as I said, you, you, you're quite okay with your access to VLE, aren't you? Yes. Um, with this particular um, page that is up at the minute, yeah. I can't, um, I'm not sure how to find it. Right, well, let me go back. I'll close that down a minute. I'll close that down a minute. Right, now this is the VLE that I'm on now, right? Yeah. So basically you put your, you, you well, attach your details in your lab on. Yeah? Is that the same page that we were just looking at that was showing us, um, that was the same? Yeah, just let me go back. Oops. Okay. We'll go back again. Right, okay. And back again. Yeah. Now this is the opening page that you'll find in the VLE. Yeah. And basically, you put your, your um, login details up here, and your name will appear there. Yeah. 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 You can click on my courses, uh, or you can actually go down, and yours will be in the teaching and training area. So you click on that. That will open up the different awards. You were doing the NCFE level five, so you click on that, and that will open up the level five. And again, here you have. An extra templates, ebooks and journals, DT units, level five diploma version one, uh, course handbook, diploma in education and training, level five diploma course guide, uh, assessor course, oh, that's a the level three assessor course assignment brief for units one and three. That's a part of another program, which because it's of interest. Uh, to this one because this, it talks about assessment quite a bit. It's useful that I put it in here as well so you can have a look at. Learning styles questionnaire, personal development planning, SWOT analysis handout, Harvard referencing because that's important as well to make sure that you where you use um, research material then make sure you reference it, that's all. Um, so again, it goes into unit one, and I've got some specific material in here. Um, the specification and cover sheet, an observation report, because uh, we need to do an observation of teaching at some point. Um, blank templates, an e-book in preparing and enabling learning in the lifelong learning sector, education and training learning styles, inclusive teaching and learning. Theories that underpin, un, underpin teaching and learning, legislation and codes of practice, principles and practice of assessment. Hey, so, what page were we just looking at? Yeah, the one before, this one. Um, we're looking at both pages. One looks like the um, the the spec, but then you've got another column because we were just looking at two different pages. Oh, you're right. Yeah. Before, yes, that goes back to there. So once you've got into your level five, oops, come back again. The first bit is the actual about the actual program. This bit here, and there's quite a lot of stuff on there. Um, basically, resources on there to look at. The no, actual the unit itself had all the 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 units, and you had the yeah, the unit four, the one I was looking at before. Uh, yeah. yeah. Let me find that. Uh, let me have a look. Uh, unit one, teaching content ideas. Yeah. Okay. That, that's the one. And the suggested evidence one, which is the other one I've got on there. Both of those I've downloaded <clears throat> onto my taskbar at the bottom so I can bring them up. So that's that one, and that's the other one. Those are those two there. Most of these Word documents are stuff that I've put on. Um, I've got some stuff on initial assessment, portfolio creation templates. Uh, the assignment submission link, don't bother with that one for now. Uh, I'm going to sort that out with you separately. I'm, I we're going to put the portfolio together. Oh, okay then. Yeah, so basically everything you need is on there. Uh, you can just have a drop into it, anything you want on there. Uh, for instance, I'll pull that one up. So, Oh, and here it comes. Codes of practice in teaching and learning, legislation, codes of practice in teaching and learning, Equality and Discrimination Act, Health and Safety of Work Act, Use of Work Equipment Regulations, Sex Discrimination, Special Educational Needs, Freedom of Information. They're all 
acts of parliament that, that impinge on the education process. Goes, okay. You can look any of these up if you need further information on those. Okay. Again, follow up these arrangements with further research yourself. If you're working or intend to work in a particular learning sector, your response can include any other special regulatory factors that may apply to it. The easiest one I can I can give you on that is uh, you'll need if you want to work with um, sub 16, you need to have um, well all CRB checks. Most teachers in there need to have that certificate in place if they're going to deal with youngsters on, under a certain age. Once they get post 16, that doesn't apply. Uh, unless the groups I used to, some of the groups I used to work with were special educational needs and they were classed as vulnerable, so they still came under the uh, the CRB, CRB heading. So again, it's just having the knowledge to know what you need to do and the situation, the particular situation that you are in. That's why I've, I've added this bit at the bottom. Okay. We'll get yeah, pull up any of these documents. You get back down on here um again this one oh. this is uh, a powerpoint basically uh, it's it's theories basically about how the education process takes place um, how can theory support practice in teaching? You can train a teacher to act like a teacher without theory faking it. <laughs> you need to educate a teacher to understand the theory to be a real teacher. The key professional decision making article on Moodle I've got on there as well. To what extent do you agree? You might say that's rubbish. And if you do, great, because that, that brings discussion. Professional standards, teachers and trainers. There is a, a section in another um, unit that you'll come up to soon. Um, it talks about professionalism and dual professionalism. Now, there are a number of issues around this um, that came up, and it raised its head again. Not fairly recently, it's got a few years back now. Um, I can remember when I first came into FE from um, engineering, which is, you know, I'm a mechanical engineer by profession, um, we were looped on as unprofessional, which was a bit of a slap in the face for us, really, um, because engineers have professional standards just like teachers. So this was where this duality came in. The Institute for Learning, which is now defunct and it's been taken over by another set, I can't remember it now, the other organisation that's taken its place, looked upon it as a dilution of the professionalism as teachers, uh, which, again, after a, you know, a number of years, it, it became apparent that it actually wasn't a, dilu a dilution, um, dilution at all. It was actually um, all-encompassing because it brought something to the table because the if you think about it, any professional job is, it has degrees of professionalism. And if you take it even further, you can look at the, the ethos of that professionalism. It's very similar. So, yeah, there were a whole host of things uh, that came up during that period. I'm talking 1990s, 19, late 1990s. It was not that long ago. At least not to me. <laughs> Again, there were, there, were, there were one or two questions to ask. It's, a, it's quite a good um, thing to look at. This you can go, you know, go through this on your own. You don't need me to, to take you through a PowerPoint. Um, but there's plenty of things on educational policy. Um, definition of learning. Oops. What is theory? Uh, what is practice? What's a model? Uh, you know, so it, it goes into quite good detail. Yeah. 
So there's, there's quite a good a few bits in here. Mr. Osborne, maybe I excuse my brain is full. <laughs> so, yeah, by all means, have a look at these if you want some ideas, further ideas, yeah. Um, which side is dominant in you? You can look at left and right brain. Um, those, those are other. Uh, again, it comes on, there's actually uh, an R in there now as well, VARC, yeah, to include read. Um, it's people who will learn visually, some will learn auditorily, and some is kinesthetic. To be honest, a lot of people have looked at this now and have decided that most learners are not either visual, auditory, or kinesthetic. There will be a mixture. They may be uh, predominantly visual or predominantly auditory. Uh, and it sometimes takes a while for the learner themselves to realize what that is. It took me many years to realize that auditory is not in my um, vocabulary at all. If somebody, um, if, unless they're interested, if somebody was to give me a lecture for an hour, unless it's a subject I'm keen on and it's something I'm interested in, or they can make it interesting, because some lecturers, some university lecturers are excellent. Um, literally, I shut down after about four minutes. <laughs> but if you, if you show me something visual and give me something to handle, then I'm yeah. there. And I think that must be the engineer coming out in me. But again, yeah. if you understand that, then um, obviously you can better need your... Um, your students. Some of these, I mean, the, 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 there are some theorists that say there are about eight or ten of these different things, but it's, some are just a variation on the theme. Uh, they're not really, um, you know, um, definitely. Only a month is a model. You've got then an activist, a theorist, a pragmatist, and a reflector. Now, again, um, if you know what you are personally, it helps as you teach, yeah? I mean, based on Kolb, uh, which you've probably heard about before, um, Kolb made a lot of statements and came up with a lot of theories, and quite a bit of those were good, uh, and, you know, it made sense. So, have a read of Kolb. I've got some stuff on there somewhere which will cover Kolb. So, yeah, there are plenty of other uh, characterizations, but really, adventurous laws, social learners, practical learners, is what's the, what's the difference between practical and kinesthetic? It's the same. So, yeah, there's a lot of stuff on here that you can sort of read through the lines, if you know what I mean. <laughs> there's quite a few of these on here. As we start a new school year, Mr. Smith, I just want you to know that I'm an abstract sequential learner and trust that you'll conduct yourself accordingly. <laughs> yeah, right. Okay, I'll listen to that. So, again, some of this, um, not to say it's nonsense, but there is an awful lot of stuff out there that is, shall I say, peripheral. Um, the, the main theories of how people learn and how they understand are quite central and straightforward. As I said, Kolb is a good example of that. So, let's go back down. Do we? Yes. Anything, anything on here, all the, every, everything I should say on here is open to you to have a look at at any time. Um, again, as you move into Unit 2, that will have all the same things in it. And Unit 3, again, Unit 4, and Unit 8 shouldn't have very many because it's only two learning objectives, Unit 8, um, you'll be pleased to know. It, it, what happens is the first um, the first four units in the qualification are quite, there is some overlapping work that you can cross-reference, but it is quite detailed. Um, but as you get past the first four units and move into the, the secondary units, then um, it's a bit more straightforward and it will, apply directly to what you were doing and you can put that in okay okay yeah so have you got any specific um those ones so those units they are um yeah. 
Eight, eleven, thirteen. Well, yeah, I'm like, it follows through. You can run through these down yourself because they are long. Three and four, those are the mandatory ones. Yeah. One, two, three, and four, yeah. But after that, I spoke to another student about this as well. We, I picked, well, Raman and I picked together a number of units that will meet the needs of most of the, most of the learners on this course. Developing per air resources is eight. Effective partnership working and learning and teaching context, 11. Equality and diversity. And again, you will have covered some of that in earlier units and there'll be quite a lot of cross-referencing available for that one. 24, teaching in a specialist area because we've quite a few um, of the students we've got are in that particular, you are particularly uh, yep. in a specialist area, yeah. And then again, managing behaviours in a learning environment. That is pretty well across the board for nearly everybody. They've, they've got some sort of issue um, with um, how they manage behaviours. Now that, that can cover a wide range of things. Um, it, it can be as simple as not notifying your tutor if you, got, if you can't turn up or if, if you're not available for the session or just, just not having any contact at all, not sending in work. Those are behaviours that need to be managed. Um, so, yeah, it, it's not just actually class behaviour and things like that. Okay. So, yeah, those are there. Now, if you, you can look at the whole suite of units on here. Where are we? Level 5 Diploma, DET units. You can look on those, and if there are any units on there that are more specific to you than the ones we put down, just let me know about them, and I can put something together for those before we get to them, if you know what I mean. Yeah. Okay. So by all means, have a look through those. And uh, this, this, this BLE or Moodle is, is a, a really good resource. There's an awful lot of stuff in there. But don't just tie yourself to what's here. If you want to loop something up, um, the net is as wide as you want to go. Um, I pick up lots of information from the net to help me deliver it. So, yeah, by all means, look on there. Always, always do some research yourself if you're not sure or if you think it doesn't quite hit what you want. By all means, have a look and see what you come up with. Okay, then. Okay. Okay, yeah. So... As soon as you're ready, uh, you can send me some more material if you've got any ready. Uh, just email it to me uh, and I will have a look through there. Now, because I'm starting to get material in now, um, let me bring something up. Right, bring this one. When you, um, you receive back from me an assessment uh, sheet, one of these, yeah? Um, it, it will have whether you've achieved or not here, and it will say MY in there, and it will say why it's MYA and what needs to be done to bring you up to achieved. Uh, or it will say achieved and put in something like good response, blah, 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 on there. Uh, and at the end, I will put some like this, I will put some detailed summative assessment of what I've seen in there for you. Now, what I suggest you do is when I send this back, keep it. Don't, um, don't do anything with it other than here, on your script that you want to send me, your separate script, yeah. I um, uh, don't know whether I've got a copy. Oh, just let me put everything down. Oh, wait a minute, yeah. Um, assess that one. No, that's not the one I want. No, that's not the one I want. Daddy, I've only got those two. Oh, no, just a second. <laughs> I will move those a second and I'll have a look where it's gone. Uh, oops. Why is that there? No, that's not the one I want either. No, just don't put meat on. Yeah, take that for um, that one. 
Oh, this is it on here somewhere. Just there we are. Yeah, so you put your script on here for unit one, yeah, and 1.1 my current role is a assistant to assistant, and they will do that. I will go down this and it something like good <laughs> that one. Uh, you when you send me your script, I will annotate the script along, along using the review, yeah, uh, and as you, go, as you go through that, um, then I will put the different. Um, Oops. Annotations on the side of the um, well explained um, on the good fine. Still need to see ah yeah um, she's actually put on appendix one point six uh, which is equivalent to ALP in my current school, but she's not actually put the appendix in. Uh, you know I've not seen it yet, so basically I need to see that. Um, and again, as above for that as well. So it, it basically gives you some guidance on on what I need to see, uh, or if it's good, if it's fine. Uh, well, I explain. Still need your appendices. Um, you know, I've still not found them yet. So, um, yeah, good. Yeah, we have. A, do you know what Dropbox is? Yeah. Yeah, we have a, a Dropbox system on that. What happened? Is she'd sent me this by email and she put all the appendices in Dropbox. <laughs> it, was, it was a while before we realised what had happened. Um, but to that end is what I'm going to explain to you now. So again, yeah, that's your script and that will be assessed. Um, as you get to this one, I will change it to assessment front seat, put your name and your registration number in there, and I'll put on my assessment will be here. And like I said, eventually, it will have um, A, you know, all down here. Um, any questions that I've had here or anything you have asked for additional, I will put a further note on to say, yeah, that's okay now. Yeah. All you will need to do there is where it says NYA is to put your page numbers of your portfolio. Yeah. So that script I just showed you then uh, of somebody else's. Each page will have to be numbered, so you'll have your name at the top. Uh, what did I do with that one? Did I put it back down? Yeah. Why does that keep coming up? Oh, yeah. Your name and unit one on the top, and there should be, and uh, it's not on. I, I need to change this to name on this as well. You will have a page number down here in the footer, yeah? So that I've just looked at there and bringing back again. Once the assessment's complete, then you just put your page number for each of these in there, yeah? And that is your record. Now, what I want you to do is each one of these, each one, each unit will have one of these sheets at the front. And when it's signed off, it'll have A's down here, it'll have all my comments down the side of here, and you'll have put your page numbers in there from your script, yeah? Yeah. Now, you'll have one of these at the front of each unit. But what I want you to do is, um, the actual page numbers here, I want you to carry them on so that when you finish unit one, let's say, well, I don't know, it's just, there's 20 pages on unit one. Yeah. You'll have the front sheet for, for unit two, but it will carry on page 21, 22, 23, yeah? So you don't have loads of unit numbers with new starting pages. So that when you finish your portfolio, it'll read like a book from okay. page one to page whatever it is when we've finished. Yeah, is yeah. That, that clear? Yeah, because yeah. what I need to do now uh, is make sure these numbers are on and make sure that your name 
and at least the unit number at some point is in position unit one um, so that I can then when they will go to a registry we know exactly whose work it is and there's going to be no confusion uh, because when these are complete obviously I'll send you them back to you to put your electronic portfolio so together that my name and number and unit number has to be on each page as well the you just your name yeah. and the unit number you don't uh, the other one um, where are we going right I when I do the assessment I will put your name and the registration number in there. Yeah. Yeah. So that'll be in for you already. Uh, all you'll need to do is just uh, record the page number. When it's complete, it will just need to record the page numbers. That's why I said that assessment I sent back to you. Yeah. When you send me a script, send me that sheet as well. Yeah. So that I can update it as we go along. Otherwise, we'll end up with several of these if we, if we do it a bit at a time. Yeah. Send you this sheet that is up right now. Sorry? You said to send you this sheet that is up right now. Or yeah, the ones I've sent back to you, you should have uh, one of these sheets. The new one that's got your corrections. Yeah, yeah, it's got any corrections that need, are needed here. And it yeah. will have a statement in her, and it'll have a bit of a statement at the bottom. Yeah. When you send me a script with you with your your work on, send that yeah. back to me as well, so that I can just add to that and then send it you back again. Each time you send me some work in, unless you know if the unit's complete all at once, fine. But if it's going to be done, you're going to send me learning objectives one and two, and then three and four. Just keep sending me that same one back, and I will I will add to it as we work through it until we get to the end of the unit, and it'll all be finished and signed off then. That's when I send it with comments on, and it's all complete. And I will actually at the bottom of here, it will have my name on here, and it will also have my signature and the date on there as well, so that you you've got a record of when it was done, what was completed, uh, and all the information there. I then that send that into our registry, uh, and they record that, so that they've got that if the um, external verifier comes in and wants to see some of your work, then we can actually print that off and show it to them. Okay. Okay. And again, there's a, a, quite a lot of information in this, but don't worry about it. If there's anything at all that you need to ask or I'm not sure about, just drop me an email or text or whatever. Yeah, give us a ring. <laughs> I'm usually at the end of the phone at some point. Okay then. Okay then. So you, you, you feel armed to get on with the next bits now, do you? Yes, I do. I'm going to do as much as I can and then send it back to you. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's why I send, send this sheet back, because then I can just add to it as we go along. But what I'm confused about yeah. is um, I'm, that means I'm sending you two completely different documents, the ones yes. that I've requested and You're your right. corrections. You're going to send me this one. And you're going to send me, where's it gone? This one. Yeah. Yeah. This is this is what you're going to write about, yeah? Yeah. Oh, and the other bit on there, what you need to put in along here, I've, I've got to check this up with Emily as well, because I've just gone through some of her stuff. The title for 1.1, yeah? So if we go back to the other one, oops, come on. Yeah, I've got all that, um, but... The corrections that you sent me, yeah, I'm sending that as well as my corrections because they're not on the same sheet. Um, right, ah, ah, right, okay. What what you need to do is if you produce your script, where are we? Here, yeah. Uh, the, it's annotated in here as well. What you need to do. Yes. When you've added, you need to add it to this, not do it separately. Yeah? Add it to your original text. Don't don't sort of give me just the bits that are missing. Oh. You with me? Yeah. Yeah. So if it says, uh, oh, it, says it probably says good. I thought it would. Um, uh, where I put on... Um, Specifics. Uh, oh, come on. Still need to see or whatever. Then 
though say appendix 1.6, then you add appendix 1.6, yeah? You can add the appendix here at the, at the point of 2.4, or you can add it at the end of your script, yeah? When you get right down to the bottom of the page, you can put, um, oops, appendices, and then just put your appendices in, in afterwards at the end. It's purely up to you which way you do it. Um, Sometimes it's easier for the assessor if you put it in where you've actually applied, you've actually referred to it, yeah. So then, when I send you the updated version, yeah, of that sheet, yeah, I will then put further comment in here, and it will say, um, yeah, that's fine, no, that's okay, that's my meeting the standard, yeah. Okay then. Yeah. The comment in there is here just to guide you, yeah? The the other bit, this bit, is the official assessment, yeah? So I would have to do this with, I just want to do that now. I'll, do it, I'll just show you how I'm doing it now. Copy that. Come back to Emily's written work. Yeah. And I will put in 1.1. 1 .1. Oops. Well, this is why I work in Word. It's a lot easier. Yeah. Back to the top. 1.1, one. space and paste. Analyze own role and responsibility, education and training. My current job role, blah, blah, blah. You can see that fits in better now. It's no good just, if you, if you just cut in and write, I know what you're saying, but don't forget, all these awards are external awards. They're not like you're just not going to get a certificate from UK University. It will be through um, the awarding body NTP. Uh, now they have their own um, inspection team or quality assurance team who would pick up on things like that and say, "Well, how do I know what this is?" Well, it's it's, it's plainly obvious, but you know they usually do things like that. So I, all I'm trying to do is make sure that. We know what we're doing and we've got it organised. Yeah. Okay. That's all that is. So just an idea for you. Make sure you've got your name on, the unit number, and then as it comes to 1.1, just put the title in there. Yeah. And again, you can use the heading off the, off the sheet you've got. Yeah. And just copy and paste it like I just did then. Uh, do the same with the others as well. Uh, that's some work I'm going to have to do to tomorrow as well for, for Emily on there before I send that through. Okay then, have you got any specific questions for me before we close tonight? No, I think that was it. I think yeah. um, at the minute I'm working on the... But what I did was I started it on a, in a completely different document. Yeah. But now I know to put it back yeah. into the, what you sent me. Yeah. And well, like I say, don't worry about it. If you've got any questions, just email me. Simple okay. as that. And I'll follow it up from there. Yeah, I'll do that. Is that good? Yeah, that's fine. Thank you. Okay, then I will call that address for the evening. And thank you for attending. Okay, thank you. And we'll be in contact again. Okay, All then? Right. I'll speak to you soon. Bye, Bye. Thank you. Thanks. Bye. Bye.